Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Sanchez. The way the world that our country is going now, you can't help but notice that race is front and center. In this show, me and a good friend of mine, Frank Lumpkin, are going to be facing race head on, asking the tough questions, because I believe if you want to create change, you have to create the conversation for change. Frank Lumpkin is a young man on a mission to change the world. He's a college student at Georgia University School of Law. He's an entrepreneur, and he's also one of the founders of Interstate 14, a project that is trying to bring a lot of business into the Columbus community. In this conversation, let me be clear that me and Frank are only speaking from our opinions, from our point of view. We're not speaking to anybody else but from us. Enjoy. Hey Frank, how are you? Hey Matthew, how are you doing today? Good, I'm doing good, brother. So, well first let me say thank you for allowing this to happen. Uh, and you are, my, you are my first guest, so thank you for allowing to be the first guest. Well, I'm just so honored to be your first guest. And um, just like you said um, in the intro, I really do believe um, this is such an important topic right. that we must, you know, um, take head on. Right. And um, I mean, right now it's especially important because, I mean, we're all just people. Right. And, um, you know, you and I, you're black, I'm white, right. and that doesn't change our relationship whatsoever, right. Right. Um, even in tense times like this. Right. And um, you know, I really hope we can have a conversation um, you know, to show others that, uh, that we need to be unified during this time, and, um, and that it's okay to ask tough questions and, uh, and have conversations with people that are different than you. Right, okay. So we recently had a conversation, I think a couple of months ago, about, you actually invited me uh, to talk about it, which I thought was really, move, it moved me, you know, the fact that a friend of mine who is Caucasian wants to know what I feel on what's going on. Uh, as the world knows, uh, George Floyd was brutally murdered in front of all of our eyes, and it took us by surprise. And you wanted to get my opinion on it. Let me ask you this then. What does it feel like to be you? in this country? What does it feel like to be you? Well, I mean, it's, it's painful to watch, you know, um, brothers and sisters feel in pain and not understand the kind of pain that they're feeling. Right. And I really just wanted to be able to empathize. Not right. that I ever could fully do so. Right. Because I just, you know, I, I have not faced the same adversities um, that you have. I definitely have not faced the same adversities that those families of those that were uh, shot, um, you know, tragically during these times have faced. And I just, I wanted to understand that. Um, how did I feel? Um, I mean, it makes, it makes me upset. I'm outraged by it. Um, and, and that's what I wanted to hear from you on what you thought that right. we should be doing. Well, uh, one thing I think that we all should be doing is what me and you are doing now, having a conversation about it. Because I honestly think the way to create change is to have the conversation about change, right? Absolutely, right. absolutely. What, what do you think is one thing that people of your color, let's be real, okay? People of your color don't get about people of our color. Well, just based on our conversation that, that we had the other day, right. I, we do not understand, white people do not understand um, the, the kind of fear, the kind of everyday um, precautions that you have to take. Right. It deeply saddened me when you told me about your daily routine that when you get in your car, right. you drive, right. you take your wallet out, and you sit it on the dash so that way if you get pulled over that an officer does not you know, assume that you're pulling out um, a firearm. That's something I've never thought about. Mm. My wallet stays in my pocket the whole time. Mm. I've been pulled over multiple you know, times, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. And um, it's never been an issue. Mm. And, um, and so I, just, I think getting across to, uh, to white people 
um, that you know we we've all faced different issues and um, not you know basing decisions on what needs to be changed and uh, and what needs to be progressed in our society on just you know one race's um, you know needs right. is is very important right. and that's why I think it's extremely important to have that conversation because we need to like. When we address issues, we don't need to address them with bl uh, a blanket. We need to address them um, mm. targeted. Mm. We don't need to address them with a blanket. That's good, Frank. That's good. Why do you think? Why do you think they do that, though? You know, I, I don't think it's because um, you know anybody's trying to you know j j like to leave anybody out of the conversation necessarily. I think it's um, you know number one harder to have some of those conversations, and number two, um, people just don't think about it. People like like I said, I I didn't know that that was a fear that you had every day of, of getting you know pulled over um, and then mistaking your wallet for a gun. Right. I would have never thought about that unless right. I would have asked you. Mm. And I think we are in this fast-paced society, and you know when we say we need to enact change now. We just go forward without, you know, asking um, everybody, you know, right. their opinion and, and how they believe the problem should be addressed. Right. And I don't think it's, like I said, I don't think it's just, oh, we don't care about your opinion. It's more like, you know, we, we, we failed to ask because we didn't know any better. Right. Because mm. when you know better, you do better. That's right. Why was this George Floyd, Floyd shooting any different than you know other shootings that happened in the past, mm. and why did it create so much outrage um, amongst the black community as well as just general America and the world? Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think it, I think it's different because now I'm I'm speaking from my point of view. I'm not speaking for nobody else. Let's just be clear. Me and you are not speaking for nobody else. We're speaking for our point of view. All right. Um, I think the reason why it was so different because it was in our eyes. We saw it, Frank, like, you know, uh, Emmett Till. We didn't see that. We heard about it. Uh, the four little girls who were murdered in a church. Yep. We didn't see that. We heard about it. But George Floyd, not only did we see it and hear it, but it was, it's, it was close to us. Absolutely. It was everywhere. It's, di it's a different feeling, Frank. Um, that's why it's, it's gotten so, it, it is the way it is. Do I agree with how some of my people are using their, I guess, platforms? I don't agree. Uh, do I agree with the writing? I don't, because that's not how we get things done. Absolutely. Um, but it, it's almost like, well, how else do you want us to act? How else do you want us to act, really? Because... Whether we know this or not, whether you know this or not, if you, a, if you are a black man in this world, you have to work twice as hard. That's just how it is, Frank. So, I have to take a breath on that because it's important. And the reason why it was so important because we saw it. We saw it. Well, I think it's important those issues come to light right. and, uh, and, and, you know, how we address them. Right. Um, we saw it up close and personal. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why it hurts. I think it's also really uh, a great point that you make in there about, um, you know, that we can't judge um, a people you know, based on actions of just a few. Um, I like right. that, you know, you said oh, wow. that you, right. uh, you know, don't agree with those that are um, you know being destructive um, in in these riots? Um, Frank, that's not I, that's not what we were taught to do, though. And I, I don't care what any uh, black person says. That's not what we were taught to do, and absolutely. they know that, right? I get it, but that's not the way to do it because it makes you it makes your people right about everything you guys have said about us in the past. Well, right. I will disagree with you there. Go ahead. Um, I, I think I think that that is uh, where a lot of people are at fault because um, it does not make my people right. Okay. It does not make white people right okay. that they, um, they they shouldn't base an entire race off the actions of a few. 
And I would say the same to African Americans right. who um, believe that all police are, are bad people. Right. Um, there are absolutely crooked cops. Right. We need police reform, right. but you know that does not base the you know the actions off those who are really trying to go out, keep us safe, and go out and really show that police are doing good work. Right. Same thing with white people. Right. There are white supremacists out there that hate black people. Mm. I mean, I, living in the South, I've, I've, met, I've met some. Mm -hmm. And they sit there and, and talk to me, you know, and, and use racial slurs. I mean, the N-word is, is still very much in, in people's vocabularies. Right. And um, I mean, it makes me cringe. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, you know, you can't define a race off, you know, those, those bad apples. Mm -hmm. But they have. But they have, and they everybody have, has. They have. Everybody has. And uh, it's sad to say that, but they have. You, you had another question that you wrote down, and you asked me why black lives matter so much. Why, why is it so important? I will say to you, the reason why black lives is so important, the reason why we express it is because we have been shown uh, so many times that it, it's not important, right? We have been shown that not only do we not matter, but our words don't matter either. Our work ethic doesn't matter unless it comes with, unless it benefits the other race, right? The white people. It doesn't matter. That's what we've been shown. So that's the answer to your question. Well, I mean, there, these events happen time and time again, and I mean, we, we got to, we got to make a change. We got to address the problem. And, you know, it is happening disproportionately to, you know, African Americans. Right. We got to do something different. What do you think we do? What do you think we should do, Frank? Well, um, I think a lot of it lies in, um, you know, just again, kind of like you mentioned earlier, conversations like that, right. this, um, you know, being open with each other, um, you know, being vulnerable with each other, mm. um, you know, really having these hard conversations. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, that is one thing I am pleased about with our generation right. is, I mean, I can't think of the county right now, but it was about five years ago that um, a, a very rural county in our, our state of Georgia, uh, my state of Georgia, had... Um, a, uh, had their first integrated prom five years ago, mm. first integrated prom. And that was because the students of that school wanted to have one because there were interracial couples. Mm. I mean, 50, 60 years ago, you I didn't have that. interracial I couples. Right. And I mean, I just think, you know, being vulnerable, if you can be in a relationship with someone of a different race, I mean, that, that, is, that is proven that we can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, back in the day, you know, I mean, there's a great uh, Mr. Rogers episode of when he has the, the black police officer um, from the show um, put, you know, his, his feet um, in, the, in the water with him, which, you know, right. showed that, you know, a white and a black person were swimming right. together, which was just unheard right. of. You know, I mean, you and I, we, we hugged each other, sure um, you know, right when we came in here. Those sorts of things just wouldn't have happened. And I think that's why our generation is going to do things differently. Right. But, I mean, we can't wait for, you know, the people who don't, you know, believe um, in, in reform like that um, to, to just die out. We need to have action now. And, um, I mean, I believe it's, it's in all areas of, uh, you know, of life, but especially, um, you know, at the policing level. I think that, um, you know, and, and I'm, I've been really proud of our police here um, in the Chattahoochee Valley and how they've handled the situation. Um, you know, from what I understand, they do a really good job of being out in the community. Right. Um, you know, I know of one program that I learned about when I was in Boy Scouts um, where they, you know, the police go out and they, um, they actually put on a Christian rap music. Um, and they, uh, they have programs where the police right. serve ice cream to kids. Right. Getting out and just showing um, then that you know they're not the bad guy, and um, you know showing them from their perspective of like, well, this is why, you know, um, the, you know, don't 
approach a police officer right. and, and you know, look like you're wielding something. Right. Um, you know, just there's things like that. Th action being taken in the community so that people understand each other. Right. So. Well, one thing I think we need to do as a, a people, uh, black and white people, um, is not only be able to sit down, it's to teach our children. Right? It is so important that we teach our children how to love other people. It is so important that we teach our children, right, that yes, skin color, it does, it, and it, you, it does make a difference in some people's eyes and it does matter in some people's eyes, but that's your choice, right? I think we're not, we're not teaching our children the correct way about race and how um, there, are, there were some white people and black people that came together, like Diane Nash, right, with Martin Luther King. Uh, we're not teaching them those things. I don't per se know why, but we're not teaching them. So I, I think that's what we need to do to get better, is to teach our children what to do, how to handle certain situations, so that they won't never get to a predicament where they will have to say they can't breathe. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you on that. And I mean, I think it is, you know, um, a, a huge responsibility as right. a parent, um, you know, to teach their kids right. to, um, you know, not see color. Right. Um, right. I mean, really, it, it, it's, it's um, something that I don't think either races are doing. I mean, right. there, there's a reason when I went to Columbus High School. Um, White people sat at one table, black people sat at another table. Mm. It was just natural. When you were in high school to do that? When I was in high school. Oh, wow. It, it, but, it, but, but it wasn't because anybody disliked the others. Right. It was just a, a, it a was, natural reaction. It was just natural. Right. Mm. So I wonder if that's how we're wired, though. Do you think that's how we're wired? Because it happened in my school, too. And I went to Spencer High School, uh, a predominantly black school. But we sure. still had some, some white, pe white kids there. I mean, it was just like that. So I wonder what is really the problem? <laughs> Why is it like that? Um, I don't think we're wired. I think we're taught that way. Mm. And I think we need to do better in teaching our kids not to be that way. Mm. But do you think they do it on purpose? I don't think so. You know what? I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know either, Frank. I don't know they do that on, I don't, I'm not gonna say they don't, and, uh, and maybe it's just cause of clicks. You know, people have certain clicks they hang sure. around. Sure, sure. Um, wow, that's something to really think about. That's um, interesting though, that, that at both of our high schools, that right. was a phenomenon. No, it was, you know, it was. That, that we both The girls witnessed. sat together, right? The boys sat together, and the couples sat together. The, the Asians sat together. Mm -hmm. Even the Samoans set together, set, you know, set together. Absolutely. And, and the white people. So it, it was like that. That's why I wonder if that's the way we are subconsciously wired and we don't even know it. You get what I'm saying? And it could be. Um, but it, it, make, it makes me want to think. It makes me think, though. If you think about it. I think, again, you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in another generation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think... I think we are becoming more accepting of, of each are. other. We are, and like you said, I do believe in our generation um, because they're stepping up. I mean, absolutely. At this past election, uh, not and not here in, uh, where we're filming at, but in uh, Columbus and uh, Muskogee County, a lot of young people went out and voted. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people are worldwide are going out to vote, and they know that even though we're told that our vote doesn't matter, they know deep down inside. That the vote matters. So that I do believe in our younger generation, in our generation, because we're getting things done. I mean, look at you and me. Just be honest here. Look at me and you. So, Absolutely. Um, I do believe it. I do believe. Let me ask you this question, though. Sure thing. Do you think that you have white privilege? Yeah. Hmm. Now, what makes you think that? What makes me think that? Well, for one thing, I had access to private school. Mm. Um, I mean, I've just never 
had to worry about where my next meal was coming from. Mm. Um, and just not, it, it kind of goes like with, um, you know, Maslow's hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you go back to your AP psychology class. Mm -hmm. um, and in America, we're pretty good about providing all the basic needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, most everyone in America has food. Most mm -hmm. everyone has shelter. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, other, other things, um, you know, the next tertiary step, we don't necessarily provide, um, you know, that being safety, like we talked about earlier. Um, that's something I don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. You said that's something right. you have to worry about. Um, and in order to keep on climbing up the different levels of the pyramid to the very top, which is self-actualization, which I believe you have found. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, thank you. And, uh, but, but I feel like a lot of people, um, I think it's easier for white people to self-actualize. Mm -hmm. And um, and that is because um, they get past those basic needs of, of feeling safe, feeling like you know they everything's have gonna be all right. everything's right. going to be they all have right. Nothing to worry about, right? Um, and that allows you to have more time to devote to an outside calls. Right. Um, for me, you know, Interstate 14, trying to bring a new interstate right. to help others, right. or my company Colga, right. um, you know, that that we hope to unify, preserve, and progress the region forward. Um, you know, if you're having to worry about yourself, you can't help others. Mm. And, um, you know, like, just take a look at history. Ancient Greece provided public education to their citizens, right. which is by standards at that time, you know, a huge boon to the entire population. Mm. Great minds, philosophy, um, you know, schools of thought were produced during that period. Um, you know, Romans, same thing. Right. You know, they built perhaps some of the greatest infrastructure projects um, in all, all of history. Mm. Um, you know, if we can get to the period, the point that we are allowing more people, black, white, whatever color you may be, to self-actualize, to reach their fullest potential, mm -hmm. to want to bring in interstate or some major project to boon their region, to mm. start a YouTube channel, right that is teaching um, other young people and inspiring and motivating right. other people to do stuff, like in your case, right. then think where we could be as a society. So we'd colonize saying, Mars, right. we'd have you know, uh, space <clears throat> stations, we'd solve climate change. You know, if we can have more of the community you know, working towards the goals of humanity, then we're gonna be more successful as a race Right. Um, as a race of people. So what I hear you, what I hear you saying uh, is that if we had all of those things, um, then you wouldn't feel like you had white privilege, or you wouldn't need it because it would be everybody would be equal. Is that what you're saying? I'd say so. Okay. Why do you think it's so hard for other white people? Because if you ask, if, I mean, I, I don't know any particular white person that feels this way. But I have heard some particular white people that say, no, I don't have privilege. I struggle just like you. I, uh, I have to struggle to put food on my kid's table just like your mother had to struggle. So what do you th why do you think they, other white people don't get it? Maybe not all white people have it. I mean, there are definitely mm -hmm. white people who are in situations that, um, you know, they are in an impoverished situation. Mm -hmm. um, or don't have it to the same degree. Um, you know, others just probably in, in denial. I mean, you know, I'm, I have white privilege, but I work extremely hard. Right. And I don't get that confused. I mean, I, I, I work, I mean, ex excruciating, you know, hours to try to make all, you know, my ends meet right. um, for my goals. Um, that's not putting food on the table. Right. Um, that is, you know, working towards bringing this new interstate to the region. That's towards, you know, managing my company, going to law school. Right. Um, you know, trying to manage all those things uh, takes a ton of work. And I think, um, you know, when you're working that hard, no one wants to admit that you, you know, haven't had any benefits. But mm. I mean. I, I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to work that right. hard if I didn't have right. um, you know right. some of the wow. benefits. That's good. That man. I did. That's good. Mm. What's the next step? What's what do you believe is the next step for um, 
us as a society to move forward? What do I believe is the next step? I, I have to go back to having these kind of conversations. You know, the, the, the book I believe in, uh, which is the Bible, it says that people perish for lack of knowledge. Now what that means to me is that if, if I don't know how you feel, Frank, then you'll never even have the assumption to ask me how I feel, right? So it all goes back to having conversations. Yep. That's, that, that, is, that is the next step. When we all can sit down and disagree to agree, right? If I can be okay with you saying I disagree, that's, that's where we need to be at, right? If we all can sit down, despite our skin colors, despite where we, what we believe in, if we could sit down at one table, right, and have a discussion that needs to be had, then it will get better. I'm telling you, it will get better. It will get better. The, the world is ran like this. I mean, these people just don't, they just don't write uh, new laws into the country. They sit and have a conversation about it. Absolutely. May get some, it may get heated sometimes, right? And they may disagree, but they have a conversation about it. That is how we get better. That is how we move on. Let's sit down, have the conversations that need to be had. So again, your children and my children will never be in a predicament, right? Where, where they're arguing and they won't understand each other. Because when we're arguing, when, when, when two people are arguing, you're never really arguing about what the issue really is. If you really want to get down, you know, think about it. Sure. You're arguing based off emotion because you, may, you offended me and I offended you. But that, and then that's, that's it. You never really get done. You never really get solved what needs to be solved. It's a lose-lose situation. Right, Frank. Right. I mean, right. <laughs> so that is how we do it. That is how we do it. Amen. So the conversation about it. So, last question, Frank. What would you say to people who look like you? Be vulnerable. Mm. Ask questions. Right. Try to understand others. One thing I would say to people who look like me is that let your guard down sometimes. You know, because what I see is that we always have our guard up. But that's because that's, that's what we've been taught to do. But if you have your guard up, you never get to see the person for who they really are because you never gave them a chance. So that's what I would say. Let your guard down sometimes. This video brought to you by MSW Productions.